Hi everyone, thank you for joining me. Today I have an incredible artist, Mario Mena. He is my guest on my podcast, Move Ahead with Dahlia. I'm the host, Dahlia Cahigas, and I'm super excited to introduce to you this incredible artist that I've been following on Instagram for a few years now. Hi, Mario. Hello. How are you? I'm doing great. You feeling good? Yeah. Yes. Awesome. So um, I wanted to introduce you to Mario because I've been looking at his posts for quite some time. And it's beautiful work that he is sharing with his social media audience. And I am hoping that uh, you will follow him. Uh, I want to mention it now and at the end of the podcast. The Instagram um, site is Mena underscore Arte, A-R-T-E underscore Chicago. That's his Instagram page, right? Yes. Awesome. Awesome. So Mario, tell me a little bit about yourself, whatever you'd like to share today. Okay. Nobody really asks me that. That's pretty cool because uh, everybody's so like about the painting. So good question. No, to I want to. I want to know about you. <laughs> me, um, me, I'm Mexico. I was born in Mexico. I was brought here when I was two years old. So I feel like I'm your traditional DACA case and documented, documented now, like uh, artist. Okay. Uh, grew up in uh, uh, California for like eight years until like I was no like six years until I was eight, and then I moved here when I was eight so years. So you. Old. Uh, lived in California mm -hmm. for a few years yeah. as a youngster, okay? For like six years until okay. I was eight. Awesome. Um, really hard to remember because I was so young. I do have like nostalgic memories, but uh, yeah, definitely Chicago shaped me when I was when I got here. Uh, moved uh, immediately to the south side, uh, Gage Park, which is kind of where I'm based out of or like the southwest side of Chicago. Yeah. Um, I think I've always liked to like draw or paint, um, but until I got in high into high school where we had like actual like courses and stuff like that, I really picked it up and everything else kind of like faded away and art was like my thing then. Yeah. Um, and ever since then, I just haven't stopped painting 15 years now, 16 years now. Really? Yeah. So, oh my gosh. so people like see and we're like, um, when I talk to them and they're like, give me like advice, I'm like. You got to do it for a long time. I mean, you don't have to do it for a long time, but you got to learn a lot in those years. Yeah, because of the skill that you yeah. are perfecting in your work. Right? Yeah, and then I never went to school for art, so that I'm self-taught. You are. Um, yeah, because of that. Uh, when I was in high school, a senior, um, it was really hard to find funding. I couldn't get FAFSA um, because my uh, immigration status and all that. It was really kind of... Uh, disappointing uh, i feel like depression like i saw all my friends like go to college and i had just had to go to work like a uh, typical blue collar like warehouse job you know where i couldn't really focus on my art so mm. it was really like it's a time in my life where i look back and it's like it kind of hurts you know yeah it was difficult yeah very difficult um but I kept doing it on my own. I was like, I'm not going to give up. That's incredible. And just on my own free time until so like a few years ago, I quit my job on the spot. I just couldn't do it anymore. My murals were kicking off. A lot of, I was getting a lot more jobs. And I was like, I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to try it. And if I fail, at least I tried. Because I think over like the last 10 years, I just had that in my mind. Like, man, I got to try this. Or if I don't, I feel so like conflicted inside. That, that like, is incredible. I'm I'm so glad you're saying that because um, it is difficult, right? Yeah. Um, especially if you didn't have the opportunities that a lot of your friends had at uh, teenage, in mm -hmm. your teenage years. Um, and then you tried to do this like nine to five mm -hmm. work and it wasn't good for you. It wasn't healthy, right? No. Because art was pulling you in. Yeah, but the funny thing is I lasted there. I've only had one job like that 13 years from high school to like wow. two years ago. Really? Yeah, and it, it was horrible. It was like I would start at 1 in the morning yeah. to like 10, 11 in the morning. So wow. my days were always flipped. I feel like I never had a regular like morning day or anything like that until I quit. Started doing art. And it's like life isn't this miserable, you know, as like before, because I was stuck in this, like, 
like warehouse, you know, food industry kind of like environment, which is the opposite. So were you, you were still doing your art. Mm -hmm. It's just the job was taking up a lot of oh, your time. Oh, yeah, 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 a lot of it. And just like um, the food industry is very toxic. <laughs> like just yeah. people need stuff and they don't care yeah. what's going on. They just need it. Yeah. Um, and I just couldn't do it anymore, you know, like working. So in you let go of that job. You started what you wanted to do, mm -hmm. your passion. Um, I wanted to mention that uh, I met you. This is the second time I meet you. Yeah. The first time I met you, I remember you. I There's certain people that I run through in my life that I don't forget. And you're one of them. Um, I went to show a home with one of my buyers mm -hmm. in Gage Park. Mm -hmm. And um, my client ended up buying this home. It was your parents' home, yeah. right? Uh, Deborah was my client, and um, I remember that, I, I don't remember specifically what happened that day, but I remember that we talked, and I asked you, are you on social media, and you said, yeah, and you told me what your um, Instagram page was, and that day, in 2019, I started <laughs> following you, and since then, I've seen all your work. This screen shows... Um, a recent, um, when was this one from? Um, the end of December, like finished it, like around the new year. So like beginning of January. Okay. And this was at Roberto Clemente mm -hmm. Community Academy. Yes. Which um, has, uh, they they called you. Were there any other artists that were involved? Yeah. So I work with Paint a City. His, his an, it's an artist-led uh, nonprofit. Um, it's founded by Missy Perkins and uh, my friend Barrett. Um, so whenever they get jobs, they kind of act, act like our managers. So really? they get all these jobs from like schools and it's really good that they do that because it's really hard for artists sometimes to go through the whole process of meeting with the clients, what they want, especially if they're a bigger organization, Absolutely. like figuring out budgets and all that. So now they just call us up. They're like, Hey, we already did all the meetings. This is what we need you to do. Are, wow. you, are you down? And it's such a great experience, yeah. especially because they're artists themselves. So, okay. um, yeah, so they hit me up. They're like, hey, uh, Roberto Clemente wants this like mental health room where the kids could like retreat if they're having a crisis. So there were four murals connected in the same room. Really? They asked me to do the underwater, like, coral reef. I was like, I'm totally down. You know, I want to paint some turtles. I want to see this in person. I I'm, know. I love turtles. This is incredible. Look, like, at the, look at the vivid colors on this. It's incredible. Yeah, we were even talking to the other artists because it's a deep sea, like, space. Yeah. So the rest of it is, like. Uh, deep space planets yeah. astronauts uh, blended in and even the artists were like man we should do this outside so people could see it yeah because only the kids or the staff will see it well that's incredible that um, roberto clemente community academy has something specific for the students when they need to like decompress yes. and, and work through whatever they're going through that's amazing. I love that. No, yeah, because honestly, like, um, I started painting because of, like, what I was going through. That I couldn't really speak to my parents about things. It's just typical, like, teenager stuff, you know, yeah. where you feel like you can't open up. Uh, li living in, like, the United States with, like, traditional values at home, there's a lot of conflict. Yes. Um, and you don't know where you belong, right? Like, yes. Or what are you supposed to do? Um, so I turned to art, like, in high school. Like, I would just go home and, like, listen to music and paint. You know? Yeah, so that goes to my next question. I wanted to ask you about that. So what was your clearest memory from your childhood when it comes to your artistry? Like, do you remember mm. something that um, as a child that was very clear of when you were doing art? I just remember like in California, like I said, a very like, like faded memories but i remember just drawing like on the floor like little mm -hmm. kid typical just drawing like cars and like i hanging out with my cousins and like them wanting to play toys but i wanted to draw you wanted to draw um you like were very, trying to express yourself yeah but yeah but like very faintly and it's like yeah. i just barely remember it and i yeah like I, awesome. i've attached myself to that i'm like i always knew you know yeah but um 
I mean, just the older I get, it's really hard to remember. But I do remember that. And just like growing up in California was a whole different. Um, I know it was a very r- rural town, so it was different from Chicago. Everything was very slow paced. But mm-hmm. also, like I think, like the sunsets, just like nature out there. Since now I do a lot of nature. So <laughs> does that? So you're saying that that kind of inspired you the the environment? Yeah, for sure. I think okay. I don't think like I think subconsciously it did. I right. don't think you know like. Right. You were a child, you didn't know that, but yeah. Yeah, like landscapes, you know. It's something that was easier, I guess, for my skills at that time. Okay. But yeah, very like faint memory, but I still remember it. It's like a movie, like very like, like, I don't know, very classic memory, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. I love that. Um, One other question I had about that is, uh, what was a, uh, a defining moment in your life? when you knew you were an artist like that you were like yes this is it this is mine i think like i've always known but i've hold, held myself very accountable or very um i'm very strict with myself like oh i think growing up i was like i'm not an artist yet i'm, I'm a person who likes to paint or do art mm-hmm. i remember for a long time but i remember in high school my senior year um my teacher at that time um in the CPS uh, high school, there's like uh, for high school students, like uh, all city competition where yeah. they showcase these artists and studio art, honor level art. And uh, my teacher ended up submitting one of my works mm. without me knowing. I had no idea. No kidding. And she came back and randomly one day she's like, oh, I have an announcement. Uh, Mario, you won first place. <laughs> This is, and I had no idea that she did this, you know? And I was like... Who was that teacher? We got to give her some credit. She, Miss Weiss. Miss W-I-S-S. Weiss. She was so cool. She was like... She wow. just let me do what I wanted, like, art-wise, you know? Like, she would give assignments, and, like, I feel like skill-wise, I would just go off on my own. But she wouldn't restrict me. She would just let me, like, flourish. Um, but, yeah, I remember then. And then the being... The gallery was at the Museum of Science and Industry. Mm. So being there, surrounded by so much work, I was like, okay, I think, yeah, this is cool. This is where I'm supposed to be. This is cool, you know? Like, <laughs> this, yeah. So I think that was definitely a moment where I was like, I'm never, I, I'm at least never going to let this go. I'm going to work with it whichever way I can. Because I couldn't go to college just because of my situation back then. I was like, I'm just going to cr- keep creating. If I make it to a show or something good or bad happens... It's not about that. It's about my mental health, Mm -hmm. me feeling better, and enjoying life Mm -hmm. in my own way. Good. That's awesome. What high school did you go to? I went to Curie High School. You did? Yeah. So it was very well known. I don't know if it still is, but back then for like a vocational school, Mm -hmm. I loved being there. They had a lot of different programs, a lot of theater, dance, visual arts, mechanic, wood building, set design. So when I was in grammar school, I always wanted to go there. Also because I had like a aunt that went there like years before. Mm. And then just hearing the reputation of that school. So you had a good experience there. Yeah. Um, I definitely shaped me. I think I had really good and bad experiences because high yeah. school. High school is like yeah. that. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We um, all we all have been there. <laughs> yeah. And for a long time, I didn't like, I mean, I didn't really like it because I felt like you know, I had some bad things happen. Mm. Um, but now that I'm older, I definitely rep the school a lot. And whenever I see somebody or we talk about where we went, if it's Curie, you know, everybody's like, hey, what's up? You know, yeah. such a big school, too. And it was very diverse, you know, different ethnicities yeah. and all that. And looking back now, a lot of the people who had graduated from that school, we are doing something creative in some sort of way. Yeah. Everybody has their business. Yeah. So it paid off, I guess, at the end. That's awesome. So I want to talk about a couple of other things that um, I saw on your page that you've been involved in. Uh, one of them was uh, you did live art. Oh, yes. At a recording. What is it? It's a record release. Record uh, release. Yes. Tell me about that. Yeah. So my friend DJ N9, uh, if you have time to look him up, plays a really great Chicago house music. Say his name again. DJ N9. N9. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So he invited me before the pandemic. Um, he invited me out to paint at one of his like a weekly parties at a bar where they showcase different DJs. Really? So I would start painting with them. Then the pandemic hit. And then um, a few months ago or a month ago or something, he said, like, hey, we're going to have another party, but we're going to release our record. Uh, I want you to paint, you know, like I'm like, of course, I'm down. So, yeah, 
just went to set up and then listen to some great music. And to think about like, you know, house music here from Chicago. Yes. Like you gotta, we love our house music. <laughs> yeah. Just saying. And then it's my <laughs> friends. And for me, like life painting is uh almost like a spiritual experience because you're feeding off the crowd. I was just about to ask you about that. Yeah, like you're feeding off the music. At home, I always paint to music. And it's yeah. always like long mitzvahs. It's not like an album. It's like three, four hour mitzvahs. So oh. I could just continue the flow because to paint, you got to work a long time. Mm -hmm. You can't keep going back and forth or you're never going to finish on time. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think discipline is very important as a independent artist. Yes. Um, but yeah, it was so awesome. Just great music. All the DJs featured on the album played there for like an hour each. Um, the people that show up, you know, I feel like these dance events are like a safe space for people to mm -hmm. come, mm -hmm. uh, not feel judged. So it's just great. Like, seeing that's every beautiful. Yeah. Everybody dancing. I'm, you know, it's like alternative, like entertainment, you know, you're dancing, you want to relax for a little you're bit. You're feeding Go off the energy. Right? Yeah. And then yeah. they come and check it out. They want to relax yeah. from dancing a little bit. Oh my God. I would just sit there and watch the whole yeah the, the whole paints work all of it i and, would watch all of it and i've been doing live painting at events like that's how i started really getting out into like the chicago scene was mm. in my early 20s with another dj dj mr bobby he would throw a lot of these underground parties in pilsen yeah so that's how i really started was like the warehouse house techno like scene like live painting and stuff wow. and from there i feel like i became more more into like public art i would yeah. say yeah okay. but i've always like that's always been like my background kind of a lot of people don't know but like that's really how i started mm. like, it was like at these parties you know we just want to go have have fun i want to go paint i've met so many artists musicians this community of like or a subculture i would say you mm. know and like i grew up listening to 80s music you know new wave all that stuff post-punk so i feel like i've always felt part of a subculture so yeah yeah it feels really great to be part of one here in, in the city yeah i i have two sons that mm -hmm. are musicians and um, my husband and i have pounded the house music into their heads <laughs> yeah <laughs> they'll thank us later for sure um but um you know we have always supported their their art their music mm -hmm. uh because i've always felt that um, music or art or sports, uh, something that gives a young person some other way of expressing themselves is so important in this insane world of ours. Very much so. Yeah. Um, who do you um, surround with yourself with for support? Um, I, of course, other visual artists that I've grown up with. A lot of my friends I've known for over 10 years, yeah. some 15 now. Yeah. Artists, visual artists, because we would hang out together in high school. Oh, that's awesome. Like after school and just hang out. But also like musicians. I think a lot of my influence comes from music in the city. And yeah. going to parties where even if I'm not painting, I want to be free. You know, feel the house house music is a feeling, right? Like and Absolutely. we're always like searching for that feeling out of that floor. You're an old soul. I know. Soul and you I know love that. <laughs> and also like um growing yeah. up a lot of my friends were older than me, like ten years older yeah, than me. Because yeah. I had neighbors who were older and of course we were, we were neighbors, we'd hang out. So they really got me into like the dancing and like all that stuff. But yeah, like I surround myself by a lot of musicians and artists too. But, like, my favorite thing is, like, supporting music. I have a lot of friends in, in rock bands, alternative bands, DJs. And for me, aside from doing all my community work, mm -hmm. my public art, when I want to relax, I want to go dance, you know? That's awesome. Yeah. So what do you consider your work like what's the name is it street mm -hmm. art is it what it what would you consider it if you want to give it a name you don't have to <laughs> yeah it's it's it right like sometimes i think when uh, i get asked stuff like that it's like why do i have to like why do you have to put yourself in a box yeah why do i have to package it and market no, it to you you don't but yeah i think it's a blend of like so i've never learned i never went to school so I think street art in the sense that, like, yeah, I've done art. To, I don't know. It's really hard. Um, I always have this question and this kind of dilemma, like, what am I? And, yes, I'm a painter. I'm an artist. But I don't think myself I'm, a, like, a traditional painter or 
graffiti street art i think i'm a okay. blend of everything okay so at the end of the day i just say painter or artist but yeah like there's like i teach a street art like mm-hmm. a class mm-hmm. um but yeah i don't know i think i'm just a painter like i love to paint from canvas traditional brushes love to spray paint now i'm like addicted to spray paint oh, yeah. it's such a great like medium to work with especially outside but with anything, I'm getting into like a little bit of installation. So I I don't feel like I could like if I label myself, I'm setting these like no, boundaries. don't label yourself. Yeah. Throw that question out the window. So it's like, yeah, I'm an <laughs> artist painter. No, yeah, no, but it's it's a yeah. great question because I'm well, trying some, to figure someone it out. Might, right. Someone might say, Well, what kind of art was that? And um you don't have to pinpoint it to a specific type of art. Because you do different art. Yeah, and whatever it is, it's always done with love and like at a hundred percent every time. You yeah. know, that's that what I tell passion. Passion. Mm-hmm. That's what I tell my kids. I'm like, even if it's difficult, if I'm figuring it out, even if I don't feel it anymore, or maybe like I partner up with their organization, like the, the mission kind of changed along the way. Yeah. I still gotta do it a hundred percent because it's my reputation. So I'm a painter, you know, so I always say that's I'm, called dedication. That's <laughs> yeah, dedication. it's hard, though. It's yeah. very, very, hey, very hard. I always say to my sons, nothing. Uh, wait, let me let me rephrase that. <laughs> I always get stuck on that. If it's easy, everyone would do it. Yeah. Right. I don't think it would be worth it. I don't, I don't, right. think, it, I don't you, think it would you, be special. You want to evolve as an artist. And sometimes and most of the time that would require you getting out of you you know the the norm of what other people are doing mm-hmm. getting out of your comfort zone mm-hmm. and trying different things right yeah and it's um i could be very stubborn too right like i know how to like <laughs> paint certain things really well yeah and recently like i've kind of been going through that this winter where it's like i want to switch it up yeah. um i don't want to plateau as an artist i think plateauing as an artist is kind of like this more of uh, metamorph metamorph what is it metamorphosis kind of or like um yeah it's like um i feel like it, it's kind of like death almost like um, creatively right yeah like, yeah like i can't plateau i gotta keep learning well i love that you put so much thought into that oh yeah I, probably I really too much do. probably no, too much <laughs> okay so i have one other program that i wanted to ask mm-hmm. you about you mentioned your kids? Are you talking about your students? Yeah, that, <laughs> my students. Yes. Talk about that. Yeah. So my friend Hanan, she's uh, you know, I've known her through the art scene for many years through mutual friends. She's a director of Yolokali uh, Arts Reach, which is uh, a program like an award-winning program of the National Museum of Mexican Arts. Okay, say that again. Yolokali. Yolokali. Okay. Yeah, and um, she reached out. And she's like, we have a street art. Um, opening like instructor opening like i think you should do it i was like what like i don't know how to talk to people i know how to work individually very well or with one or two other artists Mm -hmm. to do something like teach kids like i was very nervous and i still am still like sometimes because these kids are different right you gotta like relate to them yeah but she reached out she's like she's like i don't care she's like your art is awesome just come and do it so yeah i've since last spring, about a year now, I've been working with the Olocali. I really? love it. Yeah, like getting to know these kids, what they're going through. I see myself in them too, you know. Of course um, you do. So that's uh, through the Mexican Museum. Art of, Museum. Yeah. Okay. And where are they? Where is that location? Yolokali is in Little Village, like okay. 28th and Ridgeway. Okay. Um, so and, yeah. And so um, is it something that's on? the website for the museum yeah. and then they can go in there and look at it and maybe mm-hmm. register their kids. Yeah. And like the Yolokali pays, pays the students too, to come. So not only are you. Oh, coming, like a stipend. Yeah. Oh. Which is great incentive to get oh kids God, to like stick around, you know, yes. it's really hard to like keep them focused. But if you have a little incentive, like I always tell them like you get some money and you get to go out with your friends, get some food, hang right. out. Right. And you're learning something that could be mm-hmm. a, a love of your life. When you're older, because if you stick with it. Yeah. And it shows them that, like, if you love something, you can create a career out of it. You don't have to be stuck in this, like, typical, like, capitalistic society yep. where you have to work, like, typical blue-collar jobs. You know, every you could do what you want. 
but you got to try. And you got to dedicate yourself to yeah. it. Like you said earlier, it's, it is about dedication. Yeah. Because you do have to put a lot of time and energy. I think sometimes into more it. than like a more. regular job. Yeah. I feel like kind of work 24 seven right now. <laughs> like, or at least I'm always thinking about work. Yeah. Like, Oh, I have to do this mock up. Oh, I have to reach out to this person. Oh, I got to check in with them. Oh, I still got to make time to do art in general. Like I'm always, cause you're running a business. Type. Yeah. You know, it, in in a way, you're running a business because you are your business. Yeah, you are promoting yourself, and you are uh, working with the students, and you're doing your side artwork. Mm-hmm. And so there's, it's like never ending. Yeah, <laughs> but it's right. This is what I wanted, though. This yes. is what I wanted. So now you gotta live it. You're living the dream. <laughs> I know, right? I'm like, I can't wait till I wake up. <laughs> but yeah, it's awesome. Like I love teaching relating to these kids everything they're going through like you know depression nowadays mental health so i tell them like hey like i paint because i don't always feel great every day you know like i am i'm gonna be honest i'm not gonna sugarcoat stuff for them i'm not a part of a school you know i'm like i'm just gonna be honest with you if i'm gonna be here I'm just going to talk to you directly, like in a young adult, you know, yeah. where like... They need that. Yeah. They really do need that. And they appreciate that, you know, yeah. like throughout the like the sessions, they show me what they work on at home. You know, they go home and work on stuff. And it's it's a really beautiful like uh, way of connecting with the world because I think as an artist, I, I get stuck in my own world and I give back my community work, and my murals. Mm-hmm. But like... Sometimes you lose that connection between people or I'm so busy that I don't get to really talk and sit down and just be human, you know? So this this program allows you to have that connection with the yeah. kids, right? And see, like, the state of the world because I just get caught up in my own world, <laughs> honestly. Like, you know, mm-hmm. I'm like, I paint, so I want to paint my own world. But, yeah, with <laughs> them, like, what they're going through, what social... Uh, things that are going on affect them you know like depending on what age they are things they're going through decisions they have to make it really kind of like brings me back and it humbles me yeah and kind of checks my ego right like i think as an artist you always got to check your ego Mm -hmm. you know because any little success could get to you and then yeah that's good but like you gotta just keep yourself in check so i feel like these kids i don't know if that's like for parents if that's the same way it is but it feels like that way to the point now that I just refer to them as my kids. My kids. Yeah. I talk about it normally with random people, my kids. And they're like, oh, you, you have you kids? You have kids? I'm like, oh, no, no, my students. My, you know, <laughs> like, but it's 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 such a bond and something so natural that That's like, awesome. yeah. And it's like, okay. I'm like, oh, I guess I'm becoming this person. I never wanted to have kids or I never like saw myself as a. Uh, somewhat like a responsible adult to like a group of people but now it's become that so it's this new level of responsibility and mm-hmm. accountability which i think sometimes as, as an artist i'm trying to r- run away from accountability you know <laughs> like just like let me do what i want mm-hmm. so it's been a definitely learning experience it really humbles me and it's not easy but it's worth it mm-hmm. you know like so it's but yeah, like I haven't had an experience like this in a long time where I don't know, I just what I do and what I say affects others directly around me. And they kind of I'm kinda... so happy to hear that you <laughs> yeah. are in that zone, right? Yeah. That you know, as an artist, I can imagine many artists can't find that. And it sounds like you've found something that is really filling you up, mm-hmm. giving, you know, to your kids. And um and, and you can express yourself. You're doing what you yeah. love. Yeah. And then I help them express themselves too. Yes. So, and also, like, I think doing so much community work over the years, I think I'm, it's really hard to do public art, uh, mm. like, satisfy different people from the neighborhood. Some mm-hmm. people may like something, some people may not. Mm-hmm. So now I think I'm more focused on kids yeah. because they are the future. Yeah. And they're, I don't know, I could influence them. I could, like, openly talk to them more than, like, an adult who's, like, stubborn in their mind already Mm -hmm. you know so definitely like i'm like trying to be more for the youth now than just the general public because it's too much to like satisfy society as a whole you know it's too much going on yeah and it's discouraging sometimes but like with kids like i don't know i'm I'm gonna try you know well i'm so glad you're trying i'm so glad you started that 
get it, getting involved in that program, um, I'm sure that it is really impacting the kids that are in that class. Um, I'm a proponent to the arts, mm -hmm. um, to music, to um, arts, to, like I said, even sports, as yeah, long as anything. it's something to keep our kids involved in a positive way and you're doing that so i thank you personally uh, thank you. for putting yourself out there to work with the youth in that neighborhood um i think we're wrapping up now but i just wanted to make sure that i mention again how our listeners could find you give us your yeah. instagram page on instagram mena arte chicago or Honestly, I think now you could just look me up, Mario Mena. Mario I've, Mena. <laughs> I've done so many things. I've been on the news. So Mena Arte Chicago, Chicago. In, on Instagram. Yeah, you can find me. Um, you'll see a lot of work. I've done a lot of things here in Chicago. So yeah. a few articles. I, I, have, <laughs> I have seen a lot of it and it's incredible. Do yourself a favor and follow him. Because when you are scrolling through the pages on Instagram and you see the videos like this one, you just stop and it's just very refreshing. It's um, a positive thing for our society and for our social media to, um, to help and impact uh, our community yeah. with yeah. this type of work. Yeah, beautify your, if I can't, you know, I try to do a lot of social things, but if I can't, I at least try to beautify the community for somebody walking down the street, right? Like that makes a big difference, quality of life. You yes. Know? So when you do um, your murals, um, they do have your like signature yeah, on them too? for sure. Okay, I usually put cool. my signature and then like my Instagram. So, okay. Because now social media, so people could go check it out. Yeah. But awesome. also like follow me if you have kids, who want to be in art programs. I work with After School Matters, Yolo Cali. I'm always putting up information out there to get them to join. Good. That's the main mission is to get these kids engaged. Yes. So if you have kids or know anybody, like, you know, just bother me. Hit me up. And okay. if I, I'll find something, you know, so okay. like a resource, you know. Yeah. Awesome. Is there anything else you want to share before we finish up? Not really. Um, oh, yes. Uh, parents. If you see your kids who are creative, encourage it. Yeah. Like, just fully encourage it. You know, we a lot of us come from very traditional households where we don't see the value in art. Yes. And it's understandable because a lot of these families are coming here to, like, um, be, like, financially stable right. and all this. I totally understand. And, that and they it. worry too much about their kids not having money in the future. Yeah, which is... But then they're kind of... Um, Holding them back from yeah. things that they could be passionate about in when they're older. Yeah, so mm -hmm. find a way. If they like to dance, yeah. if they like to play yeah. music, if yeah. they like to anything, yep. just let them get it out. And then if you see that they're really into it, find another program that kind of challenges them, you know, a little bit more. So yeah. please get them involved. Good. Thank stuff. you for saying <laughs> that, Mario. You know, um, the one of the reasons that I... Um, decided to do this podcast is because I want to bring resources mm -hmm. to our communities, um, to parents, to their kids. And um, that's one of the main reasons why when I saw this one um, from Roberto Clemente Academy, I said, oh, wait, I got to have Mario on here. So thank you so much for accepting the invitation. It's wonderful to see you and to um, learn about all the wonderful things you're doing uh, with the community and with your amazing work. <laughs> Thank you. Because it is work. It's incredible. It is. Um, so follow Mario Mena. Um, thank you for listening today. If you have any questions um, about today's podcast or if you have any suggestions uh, for future podcasts, you can reach out to me, Dahlia Cahigas. Dahlia sells homes at gmail.com or my cell 773-879-4855. You can follow me on social media, Dahlia the Realtor. Um, if you want to subscribe or share the episode, please do and follow me. And I'll see you on the next episode of Move Ahead with Dahlia. Make it a great day. Thank you.